Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter we're going to talk about how to work out correct batch sizes for your business. Now this has come about, it's a follow-on from a video that I made uh, the other day about flow and about how reducing batch sizes um, will make you more money but also about how lean starts in the planning department and the first thing you must do is flatten the plan so we're going to link flattening the plan to your batch sizes um, but also it was triggered by a, a little cartoon video uh, that I saw on LinkedIn. Um, it wasn't the exact video that I used, but I've got this little cartoon video about batch sizes that just shows you how much money you're gonna make if you reduce the batch size. But you can't just keep cutting batch sizes willy-nilly without thinking about it. So I wanted to make a video which is about how flattening the schedule and then figuring out your batch size is gonna make the maximum amount of money given your current setup time. Okay, so that's what this is about. So it's all about how do you figure out correct how do you figure out correct batch sizes? What is the correct batch size? Uh, how many setups should you do? So before we get into working out correct batch sizes, let's just remind you of the point about if you reduce your batch size, and if I could give you one piece of advice about making more money, it would be to walk into the planning department and just cut your batch sizes in half because you'll immediately make more money if you do that. Let's remind you what the batch size does to the flow and the money making possibility of your business. And we're gonna have a look at this little cartoon graphic here, look, that shows you how an order flows through the business with a batch size of 10, a batch size of five, and a batch size of one. And when we get to the end of the little cartoon, you will see that the batch size of one processed the orders in just 29 seconds, whereas the batch size of 10 took double that time. Um, and you can see as you reduce the batch size, material flows faster, you make more money, you've got less space, so potentially if you wanted to, this was a permanent situation where you'd cut your batch size down to one, you could move this bench next door to this bench, move the warehouse up to this point here and literally cut your factory in half because you need less space. You need less handlers and material handlers. You need less forklifts. Just the costs just tumble out of your business when you cut batch sizes. And that's identified in that little cartoon there. So I just wanted to remind you of that. Now you could just go into your planning department and just cut the batch sizing off. Uh, that would probably be a great idea by the way. Cheap, simple, free money. Just do it today. But at some point, you can't just keep cutting the batch size in half. You gotta work out, well, what is the correct batch size? What's the, what's the smallest batch size I can get away with effectively? So I wanna talk about that, and I wanna talk about it linked to the other video I've made, which is about flattening the plan. You have to flatten the plan and take all the variability out of it. So the other day, one of the things I talked about is this idea of your customer demand might look like this but what have you got to do you have to flatten the plan and 
make the average. All right, it's one of the first things you have to do in Lean. Nothing else works unless you can do this uh, for your Lean implementation. So anyway, so we started with that, and we're going to link it to your batch size. So okay, how do you figure out what batch size is? Really, how do you figure out how many setups to do in in your uh, on your machinery? So let's start by thinking about a machine. It's a machine that we've bought in order to satisfy our customer demand. And this is its eight hour capacity right here. And we're going to say that if I run it on one job, I will produce 8,000 units. So that's its maximum speed, one job, no setup, bang. It produces 8,000 units. Now then, you've bought this in order to meet your customer demand. You've got this in order to meet your customer demand. Now the, the chance that your customer demand is exactly 8,000 units, it's very unlikely. Normally what you find is your customer demand is less than that. Okay, so maybe the customer demand is only 6,000 units a day. In other words, this number up here where you flatten the demand and you can see it. Now what you can do is to say, right, how much time have I got left here? Well, I've got two hours left. This end. How long does a setup take? Well, a setup takes Let's say it takes 30 minutes. Therefore, what does that mean I can do? If the setup takes 30 minutes and I've got two hours worth of free time, you know, 30 minutes over two hours, four setups, four setups per day. Now this works if you do this. If what you do is you, you allow this, then you're in deep trouble because of course, when, I'm, when I've got more demand than I've got capacity here, this thing's gonna go right up. I literally go, oh, I can't do any setups. I have to just keep running the machine on one batch uh, and I don't wanna do any setups. So what you've got by allowing this pattern to exist in your demand, your planner is typically going bigger batch size, smaller batch size, bigger batch size, smaller batch size, and basically creating absolute chaos through your factory. Because when it goes to the bigger batch size, you're gonna need more space, more capacity, more material handlers. You drive huge costs through your business when you move the batch size up. You wanna be moving the batch size down. But this pattern only works because we, we even the demand, then we can make a sensible calculation about how much spare time we've got, and then we can judge how much setup time we've got, how much free time have we got. Because the likelihood that the demand fills the complete time on your machine is, is very unlikely. Now, of course, what might happen is demand might go up here and you might get to the point where demand starts to grow and compresses the compresses the free space that you've got for the setup. Well, initially, what are you gonna do? You're probably gonna go with overtime for that, but eventually, of course, you have no choice. If you're growing that fast, but to put on a second shift now, of course, what happens initially, now maybe the second shift, so now you're taking up a shift and, mm, let's say, mm, three hours. So now what have I got? I got five hours. I've got five hours of spare time to do the setup. So what would I do? Well, I'd divide, uh, five hours by 30 minutes, I can do now 10 setups over two shifts. So what I'm doing 
is I'm filling my spare capacity with setup time. So I've always got enough capacity to meet the demand. And if I even this out, this calculation works beautifully. I've always got enough uh, capacity to meet demand, but I'm not uh, absorbing necessary capacity with setup time. And what I'm also not doing, I'm not filling the factory full of unnecessary crap because I'm making up the, the batch rules off the top of my head. The rules should be clean and clear for the planner. And they should be filling the spare capacity with setup time and forcing as many setups into the factory as you reasonably can without falling foul of the demand and not being able to support your customers. Now, in great companies, Toyota, for instance, I believe they have a rule for their planners, which is very straightforward. 10% of the day. 10% of the day must be set up time. That's the way they're told to plan. So if in Toyota, they drove this set up time from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, what would the planner immediately do? He'd cut the batch sizing off. That's the rule. That's the rule. There is, there's no, they don't make these decisions off the top of their head. So look, you have to flatten the demand, get, get even demand. That's why you get things like high junker boards in lean. You get even demand. Then you use that even demand to decide how much free time you've got. Then you fill that free time with as many setups as you reasonably can. And by the way, you should be doing what Toyota are doing and driving the setup time down as well, by the way. So you use the free time to do as many setups as you can. And then the factory flows as fast as your current capability will allow it. And you make the maximum amount of money with your current capability on setup time and run speed. And that is how you come up with the correct batch size. But none of that makes sense if you allow uneven demand to go through the factory. It becomes an undoable task. Simplify the process, level the demand, and then other things become possible. And then you get the possibility of making bucket loads of cash. Look at this diagram again. The factory at the bottom is making double the, double the production in half the space. They are four times more productive. That's what happens when you reduce your batch size, level your loads, you make more money. Go do it, folks. Go do it today. It's a, it's a calculation. Go do it. It's easy.